Welcome to another DivHunt tutorial. In this one, I'm going to talk about various ways to style your tags. You can style your tags in three different ways. Globally, which is great for text tags, by using classes if you want to reuse same styles multiple times, or editing tags directly, giving each tag its own unique styles. Now, let's see these methods in action, starting with the global editing. Here I have two H2s on this page. I'll select one of them, doesn't matter which one, and when I go and click here I can choose the global selector. Any changes I make to the styles now will apply to all H2s globally. For example, if I change the text color it affects all H2s. And the same goes for font sizes or even if I go and change spacing properties like adding bottom margin. All the styles you set on a tag using the global method will be marked in pink. Now, if I scroll down and choose this section for example, and then add an h2 inside of it, it will have the same properties. This is because global changes affect all the tags on every page in your project, including the tags that already exist and any new ones that you add. Now, let's see how classes work. Let's go and add one class to this paragraph here. I can do that by selecting it and when I go and click here I can start typing the name of my class. When I hit enter my class will be created and ready for editing. Let's go and set font size of 45 pixels to this class. You will notice how my paragraph right away got this property here. Now what is the magic with classes? Let's go to this h1 and add the same class we created to it. It will right away inherit all the properties that this class contains, because this class is global and can be reused on different tags. If I go and hover over this name here, this small pop-up will tell me from which selector is this tag getting styles. In my case, it's this class. Styles applied through classes will be marked with a purple color. Now, if I go and select this class and add some new properties like changing font weight, you will see that my h1 and also my paragraph have gotten this property, because they contain the same class. I can even add more options like making this text be italic and it will change everywhere. It's possible to add multiple classes to one tag. For example, let's add one more class here and set that this text is in uppercase when it contains this class. This class will also be global and reusable. So, if I want, I can set it to other tags and they will also get these properties. It's important to note that these classes doesn't work like combo classes. They work like two separate classes. Now, what will happen if I remove these classes? Well, all the stylings they contain will disappear from my tag. Now, let's talk about setting styles directly to your tag. For this method you just need to select your tag and right away you can start adding styles. All the styles that you set directly on a tag will be marked with a blue color. This method is used when you want to make unique changes to a tag without affecting others. You'll use this method when you don't need styles that can be reused. After we saw how can you style your tags, let's talk about the hierarchy of these styling methods. To create clean designs, it's important to understand how these methods override each other. Starting at the bottom, the weakest method is global editing. Above that is editing through classes, and at the top we have direct tag editing. However, in some cases you might need global or class styles to override tag styles. That adds one more item to our list, and that is option called important. Let's see how this works in practice. I have three h1 tags here. If I set a global property like text color, all of them will inherit this property. Now, if I add a class to one of them and give it a different text color, that tag will use the class styles instead of the global ones. In the third example, I will add a class to this tag and change the font color while the tag is selected. This tag will inherit those properties overriding all the others. But, if you want the styles from the class to override the tag styles, select your class, navigate to the font color option, right click here and choose set as important. 
Now the class style will always be applied over everything else. All the styles that have important option will be marked with a red color. Let me show you one pretty good use case for important function. Here I have a structure with looped elements. And if I go and edit this paragraph here, it will edit everywhere. But what if I want to edit just one of them? I can do that by selecting wishing tag and adding a class to it. Now, if I go down and edit styles on this class, you will notice how nothing changes on this paragraph. That's because this tag here already contains a style set directly to it, and those styles override styles of my class. To fix that, I can just set this property on my class to be important. And now I successfully edited single tag in this looped structure. That will be everything for this tutorial. I hope that you now understand how these styling methods work and what are their differences. With a little bit of practice, you will be able to craft clean and well-organized styles. Until the next time, happy building!